Yeah, rates are up again. I mean, we have the 10-year right now as we speak back uh, above 370, 3.7%. And again, you know, uh, if you just go back uh, not that long ago, uh, maybe two weeks ago, we saw rates, you know, were down around 3.3%. So all of a sudden, you know, they're moving back up and everybody is so surprised. This This is is your your dose dose of of daily daily market market wisdom wisdom with with master master trader trader Nick Santiago. Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's 524.23, show 495. So markets are in retreat mode today, huh, Nick? Yes, they are, Kerry. And, you know, uh, we're seeing a little bit of a pullback today in the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ. NASDAQ's actually um, down 9 tenths of 1%. And then the Russell 2000, which had a pretty good reversal day yesterday that to the downside, that's also following through with the 1.2% decline. So it's a pretty good uh, sell-off here overall. And um, again, the main theme that we're seeing is the debt ceiling. Everybody's talking about the debt ceiling. That's front and center. But uh, markets are pulling back, so we'll, we'll see how it plays out. But we all know that the politicians will raise the debt ceiling and they'll increase spending as they always have done in the past. I think it's 74 or 75 times since 1917. And, um, you know, that's how we got to the $32 trillion in debt that we're in. So the bigger issues, I think, are the banking crisis, the war in Ukraine, the proxy war maybe in Sudan, China-Taiwan conflict, China blocking uh, micron semiconductors. These are all uh, topics that people have to be concerned about going forward. All right. And rates are headed higher again. Yeah, rates are up again. I mean, we have the 10-year right now as we speak back uh, above 370, 3.7%. And again, you know, uh, if you just go back uh, not that long ago, uh, maybe two weeks ago, we saw rates, you know, were down around 3.3%. So all of a sudden, you know, they're moving back up and everybody is so surprised. But, um, you know, I've said it on here, we've talked about it before, don't expect rates to go significantly lower. They're going to go higher. And that's just the way it is right now. We that the bear market um, for bond yields has ended. We're now in a bull market for bond yields. So uh, everybody should be aware of that. The two-year note is what I believe is the most important. That's now above 4.3 percent again. That got below 4 percent, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and everybody was saying, "Oh, you know, that that's it. The Fed can stop. They're at 5 percent on the Fed funds rate." Well, you get that two-year Treasury note yield back up towards 5 percent. Guess what? The Fed is raising rates. They have no choice, and um, I, I think that's the the pickle and the predicament and 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 the situation at this stage of the game. So everybody should uh, realize that you know that that five percent move uh, in the Fed funds rate that we're currently holding, uh, if they have to go higher than that, you know that's definitely going to put uh, a big pressure on uh, technology and and a lot of other places as well because the easy money is over. The easy money is over, huh? That's right. <laughs> right. So the easy money is over, and uh, we're seeing it like in all all facets of the economy. So financials, what's doing with our uh, regional banks? Yeah. So, you know, we've been talking about this, Kerry, since before, you know, March 13th, when it actually started, the, the, the chart started to break down on the regional banks. And today they're pretty ugly again, the KRE. You know, it's off the lows here now, but it's still down about 1.7% as we speak. And the weekly chart looks absolutely horrible still. And that's something I, and that's despite the recent bounce that we've had. So I I think traders still got to watch this chart very, very closely. This is a big problem for the Fed. So far, since the bank failures began, the markets have actually rallied higher. And this tells us that they've thrown money at the system and at the problem. So basically doing some kind of quantitative easing without calling it a quantitative easing. But um, again, you know, the charts are, are not pretty there. And I think traders got to watch that going forward. So this is kind of a schizophrenic <clears throat> approach by the Fed. On the one hand, they're raising rates. And on the other hand, they're liquefying the system. <laughs> is that, that going to put the system under pressure and eventually break it? 
It, it is. It's going to cause a, a bigger problem ahead. There's no question about it. You know, it's almost like um, going in a car and holding your brake down at a red light while you're pressing the gas. I mean, that hurts the tires and ultimately hurts the engine. It may not hurt at that initial time, but going forward, it's going to cause damage to the vehicle. So this is what they're doing. And, you know, it, it's craziness, but I guess, you know, this is what they know. Right. And uh, so the dollar has been getting stronger while all this is happening. It's back uh, one, uh, 103.77 right now. That's right. The dollar has been strengthening. You know, everybody was counting the dollar out for dead. And, you know, that's not the case. The dollar is going higher. And that's another headwind for the economy if the dollar starts to break out. The dollar had a lot of resistance between 103 and 103.50. And today it's in 103.70. So, the dollar starts to move higher and that catches a bid. Um, you know, you'll go up to 105 and then 107. And then, uh, you know, all bets are off. The markets will be a lot lower if that happens. Yeah. And that's that's definitely a drain on uh, the domestic economy for sure. So in all this turmoil, we see gold heading down today. Yeah, but it's not down that much. Gold's down, you know, basically a little over one tenth of one percent. Um, when you look at gold futures right now, there's still a lot of daily chart support around that 1940 level. Now, I would be inclined to say gold could go a lot lower, but you know, gold is a product. Gold has moved up, and it's been a product of fear. So, gold, I call it the new VIX. Um, if you get a lot of fear out here, especially in the financials, you may see that flight to safety again go into the precious metals. So, um, until that 1940 level is taken out with some volume. Um, then gold could go lower. But until then, you know, it, it's kind of just really in a range here. And that's not bad. It, gold's not in a bad shape right now. All right. And silver, uh, is this a good int entry point for silver? It's back down to 23 and change uh, per ounce. Yeah, it's not a terrible level for silver. Um, it's a good pullback down to that 23 area. I've been telling my members that will be daily chart support. But really, as a, as a longer term buyer, you want to be a weekly chart uh, player. You want to get into these things when the weekly charts give you that big, big level. And that for me would still be lower. That would probably be down around 21 or 20. Um, I love the 20 level. I think if you get silver down to 20, you just scoop it up with both hands. I think that is going to be a level regardless, even if it, if it, if it teeter totters a little bit or it goes a little bit lower, it's not going to go much lower than 20. So that would be my buy point for silver. As you know, Kerry, I've, I made a substantial silver purchase in September. Um, <clears throat> so I, I would be playing it with the ETFs this time if it gets down to that $20 area. All right. Uh, so use the ETFs for it. And finally, uh, Bitcoin. What do we got going on there? Yeah, Bitcoin is weak today. I have to say, um, you know, the chart pattern on the daily chart has been very, very weak. Um, that's been making bearish consolidation. Today, we're seeing... Uh, Bitcoin, as we speak, down about 3%, testing that 26,000 level. I think um, right now, when you look at this chart, it's setting up for a uh, potential move lower down to the 25,000 level. And then you'll find some daily chart support there. But um, that level better hold because if you break through there, um, it, it, it could be lights out for Bitcoin. This is not a strong chart any longer. I've been in the camp thinking that the weekly chart can give us one more pop higher, but um, it just seems like we're making bearish consolidation on the daily. And if you do that for a continued period of time, you know, Bitcoin will break down. But right now it does uh, live to fight another day because there's still a lot of support at that 25,000 level. But uh, if that level gets lost on a weekly close, that could be very, very negative for Bitcoin. All right. Well, that is it for today. Make sure you go over to Nick's site, inthemoneystocks.com. See how he's beaten the averages for decades. And of course, the Twitter feeds at ITMS, at NickSantiago01, at Kerry Lutz. Emails welcome, KL at KerryLutz.com. Leave your comments on the YouTube channel below. And Nick, we'll talk to you on Friday. Sounds good, Kerry.